Ban-15 is a promising new medication for the treatment of obesity, sepsis, and even cancer. Ban-15 is a mitochondrial uncoupler, similar to the ancient weight loss medication DMP, which is banned due to toxicity. Mitochondrial uncouplers increase mitochondrial respiration, meaning it forces you to start burning more fuel purely for heat, and so increases your body temperature. How it works is that mitochondrial uncouplers mediate proton transport into the mitochondria that is independent of ATP synthase, meaning that the energy from the proton gradient is released directly as heat and is not used for the synthesis of ATP through which mitochondria normally store and use energy. Mitochondria themselves also have uncoupler proteins to produce heat this way, but this process is very controlled. Band 15 molecules likely band together in large numbers and form some sort of macrostructure, as one molecule is actually not sizable enough to penetrate the lipid bilayer, but to draw that is very difficult, and I doubt it is fully known. The BAM15 molecules essentially create holes in the lipid bilayer of the mitochondria, through which proton leaks takes place. This generates heat because the concentration of protons outside the layer is higher than inside. Normally, part of this energy is used by ATP synthase to turn its molecular machinery, which then produces ATP. So now your body has wasted the energy, and it is fully lost the heat, and it has to remove the proton from the inside back to the outside, or use oxygen to convert it to water. You can imagine if this process continues and is initiated on a body-wide level, you start to burn a lot of calories, just because your body is now using that energy to produce heat. Since these protons are required for the cell to stay alive, the body can't do anything against this process, but to wait till the BAM15 molecules are eliminated. The heat is also noticeable for the user. If uncouplers are used in large amounts, your internal temperature starts to rise so much that you die. If used in therapeutic amounts, it will just feel warm. The difference between BAM15 and older uncouplers, like DMP, is that BAM15 seems to be relatively non-toxic and also has beneficial effects like regulating mitochondria, reducing inflammation, and improving insulin sensitivity. The extreme heat generation that we see with DMP is also much less pronounced with BAM15. Still, it should be monitored closely. There haven't been any human studies with this molecule, and I could not find any sites that sell it. Perhaps it is too new, but we often see weight loss medication or other health-related chemicals be sold regardless if it is approved or tested in humans. Since BAM15 seems to be a fair contender to be used as a medication in the future, it is often compared in literature to the now well-known weight loss drug Ozempic. Ozempic is a modified peptide medication that doesn't directly force the consumption of energy, like uncouplers, but instead reduces blood sugar and energy intake. It also regulates the reward system in the body, reducing appetite and preventing overeating. Because of its regulation of the reward system, research also suggests it is useful for other issues, like being able to stop smoking easier, but it is not approved for such uses. The nature of Ozempic structure, however, makes it more difficult to produce as well as mandatory to inject and likely have quite limited shelf life. These problems don't exist with BAM15. It is easy to produce on a large scale, can be taken by mouth, and essentially has unlimited shelf life. Even though we see a lot of positives about Ozempic, it is not something that works for everyone, and it tackles a completely different pathway for obesity compared to uncouplers. This is why new weight loss medications are still important to develop as many people will still need them even if there is already one on the market. If the alternative is just a cheap pill, compared to an expensive injection, it will be an attractive new option. Now it all sounds a bit too promising, so let's first see if it is really that easy to make. And no, I won't be testing it on myself, since I don't need to lose weight. However, I do know a chemist who does, so maybe they can replicate this experiment. So to get started, I set up a flask in a heating block and add in 25 grams of oxalic acid as the first reagent. Then as the second reagent, I add in 25 grams of 3,4-diaminofurazan, which is the whole bottle. This reagent is commercially available for a fair price, but it can also be made from the common reagents glyoxal, hydroxylamine, and urea. Alternatively, even without urea. I will link two procedures for it below. Then as the solvent and the acid, 125 mL of 10% hydrochloric acid. I then attach a condenser and heat this mixture to a reflux for 5 hours. In this reaction, 3,4-diaminofurazan reacts with oxalic acid, catalyzed by a strong acid, to form the corresponding dihydroxypyrazine. The way it proceeds 
is first through protonation of the oxalic acid, carboxylic acid, carbonyls. Whether this happens at the same time or separately on each side is not really relevant for the reaction, but for the satisfying symmetry, I draw it as if both sides react at the same time. The protonated carbonyls are then attacked by the amines of the diaminofurazan, giving a tetrahydroxy compound. Two hydroxyls on the same carbon are generally unstable and usually only exist as a hydrate of aldehydes in aqueous solutions. So both sides will quickly eliminate water to form the more stable carbonyl. Now these are technically amides, and amides will favor the protonation of the oxygen, not the nitrogen. So we can consider that the carbonyl will steal the remaining proton from the nitrogen. Now a lone pair from the nitrogen can move over to form a double bond, and move a pair of bond electrons from the protonated carbonyl onto the oxygen, giving a dihydroxy compound with protonated amines that can be deprotonated by water, giving the desired product. When it's finished, it has become more orange and I take it off heat and allow it to cool down to room temperature, causing a white solid, that is the product, to crystallize out. Then to collect it, I break it up with a spatula and filter it with vacuum filtration. I wash it with a small amount of water and the product, along with an orange impurity, is left behind on the filter, and it kind of looks like ice cream. To dry the material, I transfer it all to a flask with a vacuum connection and heat it to 40 C while pulling a vacuum. I left it overnight because for water it usually takes a while. When I return, it looks exactly the same, but it should now be dry. I transfer it all to a dish and I can now just pick out most of the orange impurity manually. Since the product is soft and crumbles into a powder, but the orange bits are hard, so it's easy to sift through it by hand. When that's done, I am left with an almost white powder which weighs 23.2 grams, giving a yield of 60%, which is the same as in the literature, a blessing from the chemistry gods and we thank them for it. Moving on to the next step, I have to replace the hydroxyl groups with chlorine. So I move all of the materials into a large flask in a heating block. There are many different ways to replace alcohols with chlorines, but here they specifically use a mixture of phosphoryl chloride and phosphorus pentachloride. So I guess I'll have to do that too. So first, I weighed out 75 grams of phosphorus pentachloride in the same dish and add it directly on top of the material. I then add 33 mL of phosphoryl chloride also directly on top of it, without any solvent. I now attach a condenser and heat it to a reflux, causing the mixture to gradually liquefy and expel a lot of hydrogen chloride. After the initial gas formation, it calms down and it is now a bubbling orange yellow liquid. I then leave this to stir at reflux for 2 hours. In this reaction, the hydroxyl groups are replaced with chlorines by reacting with phosphorus oxychloride and phosphorus pentachloride. How exactly this mixture functions mechanistically, I could not find online, so I will leave it as is. When I return, it has become a lot darker, and I take it off heat to allow it to cool down. I then quench the reaction by adding a bunch of water. I expected the water to immediately react with the remaining phosphorus chlorides, but not much happened, so I assumed it was just tame I shook the flask to mix it better cause it looked like a bunch of solid, but it was more of a biphasic system, which is not ideal. So the water wasn't really quenching anything yet, until I placed it back and just let the stirring do the job and the reaction slowly started. What happened next though is not what I expected. So it is better to pour it slowly into a large amount of water with ice to controllably quench it. Luckily, it wasn't too much of a disaster. After cleaning up what shot out, I filtered it all with vacuum filtration. The residue contains the product, so I emptied the flask and I dissolve all of the solids into acetone and let it filter through. I moved this yellow solution to a flask and then added water in which the product is insoluble, causing it to precipitate. So I keep adding water until nothing more precipitates. I then set it up for vacuum filtration again and collect the purified product. I move the wet, pasty product to a flask to dry it again, just like earlier. The last bits I just wash down with acetone, which will get pulled out anyway. When it's dry, I move it all to a dish and the yield turned out to be 11.4 grams, which is 40%, compared to the 60% in literature. It isn't too surprising considering the little accident, 
but now that I have this material, I can move on with the final step, which is making BAM15. So I dissolved all of the material in the solvent tetrahydrofuran and added to the same flask I used for drying. Then the only reagent needed is 2 fluoroaniline, of which I add 25 ml. This is 4.2 equivalents, because in this reaction it also serves as a base, plus a little bit extra to make sure it goes to completion. 2 fluoroaniline is just commercially available, and it's generally not very worth it to make fluoro compounds yourself. The mixture quickly darkens as the 2 fluoroaniline is added, and I allow it to reflux overnight. It already begins to lighten quickly, and a precipitate of 2 fluoroaniline hydrochloride forms. In this reaction, the chlorinated precursor reacts with 2 fluoroaniline to form BAM15. How it proceeds is first through nucleophilic attack of the amine from 2 fluoroaniline onto the electron deficient carbon adjacent to the chlorine, kicking off the chlorine. Another 2 fluoroaniline molecule, which is a base, picks out the remaining proton and chloride from the protonated intermediate to form 2 fluoroaniline hydrochloride, which precipitates out of solution as a white solid. We are then left with BAM15 as the final product, which is a yellow solid that will stay dissolved at this temperature. When I return, I have removed the condenser, and while boiling hot, I filter the mixture through some cotton to filter out the precipitated 2 fluoroaniline hydrochloride. If desired, a normal filter can be used and it can then be recovered. I wash it down with more THF and then boil the solution in this dish for a minute to reduce the volume of THF. A small bit of solid has precipitated out at this point, and I then cover it with a watch glass and set it in the freezer at minus 25C to crystallize out the product. Afterward, the product has crystallized as a bright yellow solid, and I collect it with vacuum filtration. I wash it twice with THF, and then once with methanol, and let it dry on the filter for a second. When that's done, I transfer it all to a crystallizing dish, under light heat, to evaporate the remaining solvent and the yield of BAM15 turned out to be 14.6 grams, which is 72%. In literature, they really tried to get absolutely everything out, so they got a 100% yield, but I don't really have to bother with that. You can do that if you want to. So yes, it was quite easy to make. Now, if it really works in humans, and is really effective, remains to be seen. That was all. Stay skinny. See ya.